All right, thank you everyone for coming and welcome to STG226, implementing proactive data protection using Amazon EBS snapshots. I'm Surbhi, I'm a product manager with the Elastic Block Store team at AWS, and along with me is Denton. Hi everyone, my name is Denton. I'm also a product manager with Elastic Block Store team. I'm super excited today. I wanted to, Surbhi and I are going to share some of the features that we actually launched in the last month. Uh, to help customers protect um, their EBS volumes with EBS snapshots. Um, so firstly, we just want to give a very brief introduction of EBS snapshots, and many of you may already be familiar with this. Um, so EBS snapshots are used to protect EBS volumes. They're point-in-time backups of EBS volumes. And there are some properties about EBS snapshots that you should be aware of. Um, firstly, they're incremental. So every time you're taking a snapshot of a volume, that snapshot is only containing the change block data of the volumes uh, when you create the snapshot. Um, the snapshots are also crash consistent, which means that any completed I.O. that is on the disk at the time that you create the snapshot will be part of the snapshot, but any uh, I.O. that's in memory or that's in transit will not be part of the snapshot. Uh, but we actually have a very cool feature that I'll talk about later on to show you how to create uh, application consistent snapshots that also contains the I.O. of the um, in memory. So snapshots can also be shared and copied across accounts in AWS regions. So a lot of our customers for disaster recovery are creating snapshots in one region and then copying them to another region in case they need to load a, a volume up or load their workload up in the secondary uh, disaster recovery region. So there's four features that we're going to try to cover in the next 20 minutes. Um, the first feature um, that I'm going to talk about, the first two, the first one is called DLM support for custom prescript and postscript automation. Briefly why we created this feature is we have a lot of customers coming to us and they're telling us that they're running self-managed databases on EC2 instances. So I mentioned earlier that um, snapshots when they're created by default are crash consistent. So for self-managed databases like MySQL, PostgreSQL, SAP HANA, and Windows applications, it's super important that you create application consistent snapshots so that when you create the volumes later on from those snapshots, they uh, reflect the exact state of the volume when you create the snapshot. So I'm just going to go do a very brief demo um, of how you create the application consistent snapshots or how you automate it through Data Lifecycle Manager. Um, so this is the EC2 console. Uh, you're probably already familiar with this. On the left-hand side, we have Lifecycle Manager. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create a uh, DLM policy. And notice that I'm going to target instances. Um, so in this case, we're actually working with the Systems Manager agent, which resides on the instance, which runs the commands to flush all the I.O. and then pause the I.O. in order to take the application consistent snapshot. So the way DLM works is that it's got a single policy is going to target instances based on the tag or multiple tags that you add. So in this case, I'm just going to add a single tag. I'm going to add a description, uh, a test to the description. I'm just going to skip over to the new section, which is you see here under advanced settings, the pre and post script section, um, where customers can specify the different workloads that they're running on the instances that they're targeting with the policy. So if you're running SAP HANA or if you're running Windows applications, you can just go ahead and click those tiles. And then what happens when the DLM policy runs is that for those applications, it's going to automatically pause the I.O., it's going to flush the I.O. to disk, and then it's going to initiate the snapshot. And then once the snapshot has been initiated, it's going to start up the application again automatically. So in, in that sense, once the snapshot has completed, you're getting application consistent snapshots. However, if you're running uh, MySQL, PostgreSQL, or if you have your own custom workload that might not fit into the, these categories, what you can do is you can bring your own uh, commands to Data Lifecycle Manager. Uh, earlier on, I created an SSM document for MySQL. So what you do is you um, just create a systems manager document, and that document will contain all the commands required to freeze and uh, flush I.O. and you just submit it here into the policy. And so when the policy runs uh, at the execution time, it's going to look for the SSM document and it's going to run those commands on the EC2 instance by the Systems Manager agent. Um, so you can use it to create application consistent snapshots or if you have other use cases that you want to run on your EC2 instance, you can do that as well, um, just before and after the snapshots are initiated. 
And also I should mention, we have a template on our documentation page as well of what the SSM document should look like. So you can just copy and paste that across, fill in the specific sections that you want to run, um, and then away you go. Um, so that's the very first feature. The second feature I wanted to talk about um, is called Amazon Data Lifecycle Manager Default Policies. And the reason we created this policy type is because we heard from a lot of customers is that they just want a peace of mind, comprehensive data protection for all the resources in their account. The way a lot of current backup mechanism works is that you create a policy, you create a backup plan, it's looking after a particular volume or an instance, and it's creating a backup of that resource every hour, every day. The way that's different about default policies is that default policies is looking after a specific set of critical applications that you assign it, and it's actually continuous in scanning, scanning those resources to see if there are recent backups. So if there are recent backups already created by other backup mechanisms that you might already have running, then the default policy is not going to take any action. So in this way, we're trying to save customers cost and also the lower the number of resources that you have to manage. But for some reason, if one of your other backup mechanisms fails or if a tag gets missed from that resource, then a backup might not be created by those other mechanisms. And that's when the default policy will kick in and then that'll, the default policy will then create the uh, resources per the retention. So I'm going to quickly then also show how to create a default policy. So the easiest way actually to create the default policy is you go to the EC2 dashboard. Um, under data protection and security, you can see here there's two types of uh, default policies uh, that you can create, one for EBS snapshots and one for EBS back Amazon machine images. So go ahead and just click on the default policy creation. And here you're setting the creation frequency and the retention period. And you're also specifying the resources, the non-critical applications that you want to exclude. So for example, if I only want to back up IO2 block express volume types, I can choose to exclude all the other volume types. And in that sense, the default policy will only be focusing on scanning on the IO2 block express volume types. You can also further add exclusion tags if you have temporary uh, volumes that you do not want to take backups of in your account. So once you go ahead and add that, you create the policy. And it shows up in your EC2 dashboard as a policy that has been created and is going to be protecting all the critical applications. So really what we wanted to use is just to offer storage admins peace of mind that you have some sort of backup protection mechanism that will work no matter what. Um, hand over to Subi. All right, so next feature that we're going to talk about is block public access for Amazon EBS snapshots. Now, one thing to know about snapshots is that they are private by default. But you can choose to share them with specific accounts, or you can even choose to share them publicly. In that case, it becomes accessible to all AWS users. Now, most of our customers don't have any use cases for public sharing of snapshots. So for them, what they can do is they can block public access of Amazon EBS snapshots through a single account-wide regional setting. It's very, very easy to enable, and it's available in two modes. So let's get right to the demo and see how you can do that. All right, so first I'll go to the EC2 dashboard. That's where this setting resides. So under account attributes, you'll see data protection and security. And once you click on that, you'll see a bunch of different settings, including default policies that we just talked about. So once I scroll down, I can see block public access for EBS snapshots. We also recommend that you have block public access for Amazon machine images enabled as well. So here I'll go. In this case, uh, I can see that my public access is not blocked. Uh, and my users can share publicly snapshots in this region. So I'll click on Manage, and then I'll select Block Public Access. Now I can enable it in two modes, Block All Public Sharing or Block New Public Sharing. When I enable it in Block New Public Sharing, all future public sharing is restricted. But if I have any existing public snapshots, they will continue to remain public. 
in block all public sharing it's a much tighter setting and we recommend using block all public sharing if you don't have any use case for public sharing so in this case if you have existing public snapshots they won't be publicly accessible anymore and any future public sharing will also be restricted so in this case, I'll select block all public sharing and update the setting. So as you can see, I've successfully enabled the setting. Uh, it can usually take a few minutes. If you have existing public snapshots, you will receive an even bridge notification once the setting is enabled for you. And just like that, I can see that under public access, all sharing has been blocked. And now if I go to snapshots and if I select a snapshot, and I try sharing it publicly. You can see that the public option is grayed out. So no user in your account is allowed to share snapshots publicly for that account for that particular region. Now we'll talk about the second feature uh, that we released just about a few weeks ago, Snapshot Lock. So a lot of our customers have requirements to uh, maintain their data in immutable format. Now, snapshots cannot be modified by default. But if you have delete permissions for a snapshot, you can delete them. So for it to be truly immutable, we've launched Snapshot Lock, which allows you to lock a snapshot to prohibit the deletion of that snapshot. There are certain use cases for which you might want to use this feature. So first of all, uh, if you have regulatory requirements that require you to store your data in worm compliant format, which is write once, read many, where the data is truly immutable, then we recommend using this feature. In addition to that, if you just want to improve the security posture of your data, the security posture of your snapshots, uh, and prevent them from security, uh, security attacks such as ransomware, we recommend locking them because they cannot be deleted, um, either accidentally or maliciously. Now let's get to the demo. So I'll go to the snapshots console. I'll select one of the snapshots. And then I'll go to Manage Snapshot Lock. I'll select Lock Snapshot. So this setting is very flexible in the sense that I have two modes available. Uh, governance mode is less restrictive, whereas compliance mode is more restrictive. When you lock a snapshot in governance mode, uh, nobody will be allowed to delete it, but you can still give certain users permission to delete the lock or to change the lock configuration. So certain users can still go and reduce the log duration, extend the log duration, delete the log, or upgrade the log from governance to compliance. Compl in compliance mode, this is a much restrictive setting where no user will have access to modify the log settings or to delete the log. And in addition to that, the snapshot will also not be deletable. So I'll lock the snapshot in governance mode. Uh, Snapshot lock is duration based. So I always have to select a lock duration. So I can lock it for a certain amount of days, or I can select a, a lock expiry timestamp at which the lock will expire. So in this case, I'll lock it for, let's say, two days. Here I can see the estimated expiry date. So once the lock expires, uh, the snapshot can be deleted. So you can lock it for the duration of the retention period of the snapshot. That's it. Now, if I look at the settings for this snapshot, I can see that it's logged in governance mode. And if I try to delete this snapshot, the deletion attempt will fail uh, with the error message that the snapshot is now logged, so it cannot be deleted. Now, let's select another snapshot and try locking it in governance mode. So when you, select governance, uh, when you select compliance mode, you have to select the log duration or the log expiry timestamp that you want. But in addition to that, you can also optionally select a cooling off period. So a cooling off period gives you more flexibility in the sense that the log is still editable when the snapshot is in the cooling off period. So you can set a cooling off period between 1 to 72 hours during which the log will still be editable. So in case you want more flexibility, in case you change your mind, or especially in cases where you're taking a multi-volume snapshot and one of the snapshots fails and you need to delete the others as well, we recommend using a cooling off period. So 
I'll lock it for two days again. I'll set a cooling off period of three hours. So in this case, I've successfully logged the snapshot. If I'll go back to the snapshots console, I can see that it's in the cooling off period, but then again, it's logged in compliance mode as well. Now I'll select a third snapshot. And in this case, I won't specify a cooling off period and lock it in compliance straight away. So I'm selecting a period of one day. I'm not specifying a cooling off period here. So in this case, this snapshot has gone into compliance mode straight away because we haven't specified a cooling off period. And in this case, if I try to edit the lock, you can see that it's not editable. The only action that I'm allowed to take is extending the log duration. I cannot delete the log. I cannot reduce the log duration. I cannot change the lock mode from compliance back to governance. So it's a more stricter setting. And if you have compliance reasons for which you might want to lock your data, we recommend using compliance mode. All right, so that's it for our talk. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, these are some of the upcoming sessions uh, for EBS as well as for EBS snapshots that we recommend that you attend. And as always, please take the session survey and let us know what you th uh, thought about the talk. Thank you.